La seconda sessione del nostro convegno. La seconda sessione del nostro convegno. Che è una sessione che vede un unico tema trattato. Will be devoted to just one theme, but we will have two speakers. The first part. Mm. The first speaker is uh, the Archbishop Secretary. And the second speaker is uh, the new Undersecretary, Sister Carmen Ross. I will introduce uh, uh, the uh, speakers one at a time. His Excellency Rosé Rodriguez Carvalho, Spanish, was born in 1953 of the Order of Friars Minor, and he was ordained uh, in 1971. He signed his sacred scripture at the Pontifical Biblicum Institute in Rome and Biblical Theology in Jerusalem. He's been a priest since 1977. And he's been a general minister of the Order of the Friars Minor from 2003 to 2013. And as a general minister of the Order of the Friars Minor, he is the, the, the he's been the uh, 119th successor of Saint Francis in leading the order. Questo è un vero pericolo, eh? That's a real danger. On the 6th of April, 2013, he was appointed by Pope Francis, Archbishop Secretary of our Dicastery, and the Belcastro, an old diocese in Calabria, uh, was assigned to him. Now, I will leave him the floor for this first part of the session. The title of his presentation is Consecration Steps of a Journey. Now, during the celebration of, of the prayer, I spoke Italian. Now I'm going to speak Spanish. But before doing that, I would like to be uh, to to publicize something. This volume has been published today, and it contains all of the interventions, all of the speeches of Pope Francis on consecrated life in the first five years of his pontificate. So you can find it here. Uh, for sale, it is cheaper than what you will find in bookshops. Anyway, it is fundamental to read it, and especially to put it in practice. It has been published by the uh, Libreria Editrice Vaticana. Good afternoon. I am going to uh, speak off the cuff because I do not have a lot of time. I'm going to present a synthesis, a very brief synthesis of some general remarks of the remarks that we made during the seminar that we celebrated on consecration. This seminar was celebrated from the 1st to the 3rd of March of this year, exactly in this conference room. Now, some general remarks. First of all, I believe that there has been a good international attendance, a good representation of the diversity of charisms and a certain balance between men and women which uh, we do not see today instead. Secondly, the participatory methodology that was used for that seminar has been greatly successful because it has made the dialogue easier. That was one of the goals of the seminar. Thirdly, another success of the seminar was the fact that it dealt with a specific theme, the theme of consecration, but from different angles, canonical, historical, theological, and ecclesiological. In my view, we have not really focused on the consecration from the liturgical uh, viewpoint. This aspect, in my view, is very important. At the same time, 
I can tell you that the theme of consecration, the topic of consecration, is quite ambiguous. It is quite vague. In fact, if we say consecration, well, various people would understand it in various ways. This points to the great variety or also to the wealth of points of view that this uh, theme bears with it. Now, I would like to move on to some uh, important aspects. First of all, the holistic vision of consecrated life. Consecration, uh, according to the con Code of Canon Law, uh, well, the Code of Canon Law shows consecration or highlights consecration that is uh, made by the profession of the Evangelical Councils, Canon 573. So it is something that juridically defines the consecrated life. Uh, this has also helped us reaffirm the conviction is that consecrated life is not simply a structure within the church, but rather a structure of the church. So please uh, uh, be aware of this terminology because it is not simply a structure within the church, but rather a structure of the church. And therefore, it is an essential element in the life of the church. Uh, we also uh, try to focus on a biblical vision and this reflection focused on the root Kadash. That indicates a certain separation. It is the result of an action of a choice for a religious mission, as we see in the biblical prophecy, I have made you a prophet of to the nations, Jeremiah 1.5. So the biblical uh, vision also led us to consider the dimensions of the covenant and fulfillment. And then we also talked about the theological and ecclesiological points of view that opened up new pathways that will help us approach the theme of consecration. So, in fact, we mentioned the Trinitarian, this pneumatological and this sacramental visions. Now, these visions seem to complement one another because they all contribute to the topic that we treated during the seminar uh, with a wealth, an incredible wealth, a wealth that wouldn't be there if we excluded one of these uh, three aspects. So consecration has to be considered as a whole, but from various angles. And then other aspects that I wanted to highlight that concerns the seminary. And they have to do with the difficulty of defining consecrated life. And this is due to its rich diversity. During the seminar, in fact, we used many expressions to define consecrated life, among many others. Uh, we said um, consecrated life as a discipleship of Christ, as it is proposed in the gospel. And as such, this goes beyond the classical triad of the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Consecrated life. Uh, it was also said, is a life of total dedication to God and uh, through him to the others. Consecrated life is a sign, a parable that expresses the eschatological dimension of a Christian life. At the same time, consecrated life was defined as a transfigured life, a process of personal transformation at the service of all. Consecrated life, again, another definition, and these are all expressions, uh, all definitions of consecrated life that emerged during this seminar. So consecrated life is a prophecy more with life than with words, which points out to those who are not consecrated what is common to all. And again, consecrated life is an exaggeration of love that responds to the exaggeration of love with which we have been loved first. Consecrated life is also a blessing to humankind because it is called to be good news for the men and women of today. Consecrated life is the existential parable of the gospel. Consecrated life uh, is a Christiform existence based on a singular vocation. Consecrated life is an organic development, an integral development of the beginning, which is the baptism. Last but not least, 
consecrated life as liminality. And also, uh, the previous speaker talked about it. Diversity of charisms could be considered as different ways of uh, uh, being present in liminality. Not a variety of expressions used during the seminar shows uh, the main difficulty, that is, to somehow uh, find one definition of consecrated life, especially if we consider that consecrated life cannot be uh, uh, defined without taking into account its uh, pneumatological and historical dimensions. Someone affirmed that the identity of consecrated life is complex and narrative at the same time. In the debate, but also in some of the presentations, uh, the participants uh, highlighted that the discipleship of Christ, uh, Sequela Christi, is not univocal, univocal, but it is articulated in the diverse experiences that the Spirit uh, initiates. Uh, we also mentioned the uh, charismatic biodiversity. And behind every expression used to define charismatic uh, life, uh, consecrated lives, there is a theological and charismatic richness that should not be lost. There are expressions that speak of the consecrated life in its historicity and in its charismatic roots. If the consecrated life is a mosaic of charisms, they cannot be defined, but they need, we need to narrate them. This is due to the richness of this mosaic in the church that we today call consecrated life. We also mentioned some essential elements of consecrated life. And we asked, can we lock up consecrated life in a common category without running the risk of standardizing the charisms? Or can there be other elements that characterize this form of sequela Christi in a more adequate way? In response to that question, uh, what appeared clearly is that consecrated life cannot be defined only as a vita per consiliorum professionem consecrata, consecrated life by the profession of the councils. Because uh, during the seminar, we stated that the councils uh, need to be accompanied by other aspects which are equally fundamental, such as fraternal life in a community, according to one's charism and mission. Fraternal life, uh, which has its foundation in Trinitarian love, is constitutive of the consecrated life in the same way as the three vows, although it does not necessarily mean life in common, but rather fraternal life in function of the mission. So this difference was highlighted, this uh, difference between fraternal life and life in common, because there are some forms of consecrated life that do not necessarily imply life in common. Moreover, it was also said that fraternal life is already mission, and fraternal life uh, is already mission, or if you prefer, per prophecy, especially in this cultural context in which we live. On the other hand, we have a mission, and that is not an element overlapped to consecration, but it is intrinsic to it and to the charismatic project as a whole. It expresses itself par excellence in a diaconia in favor of the poor in a diaconia in favor of the poor, thus turning consecrated life into an exegesis, a living exegesis of the word of Jesus. Whatever you did unto one of this lesser of my brothers, you did it unto me. Another aspect that I would like to share with you has to do with the perplexity about the terminology before the radical equality of the different vocations in the people of God. At some point, there was some perplexity with regard to certain expressions such as a particular consecration, and I am quoting the uh, council text, peculiar consecration or consecration to a new and special title, which is uh, founded intimately on the consecration of baptism and expresses it in its totality, perfecte caritatis number five. So 
there were some doubts, some terminological doubts, as if the baptism of consecration was only partial. Now there were so these uh, terminological doubts, and what we wanted to save at all time has been the radical equality, radical meaning roots, uh, radical equality among all the vocations within the poor uh, people of God. Now, this equality does not entail uniformity. At the same time, we need to safeguard equality, just like diversity. Diversity must be saved without in any way referring to it as a superiority. Consecrated life is a box, a container that needs and wants to save and preserve diversity. Diversity is not an accident, but rather a constitutive element of consecrated life. This diversity and specificity is underlined in some cases by the fourth vow. We have actually talked about this fourth vow, which is actually the first, because it is something which characterizes us in other institutes. Diversity or specificity manifests itself in the way in which the vows are lived. In this way, it is the charisma that gives flavor to the consecration through evangelical councils. Diversity is richness in unity, in communion. In my opinion, to deny the difference means to deny the creativity of the spirit who makes all things new. All vocations are the same, but each one has each has something more compared to the others each has something more compared to the others and as all vocations have a plus they are all the same another element that was uh, highlighted had to do with consecrated life and the gospel I'm not going to talk too, to expand too much on this because we already mentioned this. We simply wanted to uh, say that we asked during the seminar, what is the relationship between the consecration by evangelical concilia with the, the profession of the gospel as rule of life? Well, the classical thread of the three vows should not be opposed to uh, the totality of the gospel. It would be enough to think of the vows as means to follow Christ according to the gospel. In this way, the vows appear perfectly integrated in the charismatic pro project. It seems uh, consolidated that consecrated life must be related to the gospel and to the word, both in the Old and in the New Testaments, the Beatitudes, Councils, and Prophecy, without this leading to think that it has a monopoly of the gospel and, uh, and the Beatitudes or the councils of prophecy, and here another question arises. What is the relationship between consecrated life and the baptismal vocation? This is a theme that, in one way or another, has uh, cropped up many times. Lumen Gentium 44 speaks of a more intimate consecration in Peter Consecrata, number 30, talks of a unique and fruitful deepening of baptism. This does not seem to be very appropriate, it was said during the seminar, because it challenges the fullness of the baptismal consecration as if it were incomplete. In this context, consecrated life would be specified by the liturgical and daily profession of the evangelical councils particularly the vow of chastity. Another specificity of consecrated life in relation to baptism is that it, and we insisted on this point quite a lot, is that it acts as a memory of the time that is to come, and at the same time, a memory of the historical life of Jesus and his mother, Lumen Gentium 46. Consecrated life is defined as a more, as a plus, uh, more closely, more intimately, which leads to say, which leads us to say that there is an objective excellence and a diversity in relation with other forms of discipleship without 
uh, this representing any superiority. This was said. Also, a few questions were asked. Uh, who consecrates who? Es Dios. So the protagonist of consecration is God. Um, and here I'm quoting, and uh, like what it is uh, said, um, it makes difference of people, uh, as in the case of the prophets. He makes people. He chooses people uh, so that people become his property. Consecration highlights the protagonism of the spirit. It is a spirit that gives dynamicism to our consecration, particularly in relation to the mission in favor of the poor, like Jesus did. God, the spirit, consecrates us to be sent to fulfill his mission. Uh, with this, um, we want to eliminate the dichotomy between consecration and mission. Consecration is a function of the mission. Another question is the following. What is the relationship between charism and spirituality? If spirituality is a charismatic gift, then spirituality is present in the charism itself. Another question, Tempor temporary or final consecration? Uh, I can sum up the, res the answer. Consecrated life is a stable way of life. And if this is the case, then consecration can only be stable itself then we know that human weakness, of course, plays a part. But as a starting point, um, it was highlighted that consecration is a stable way of life, open issues. Um, there were many. So we will have to continue researching on the theology of charism. We will have to continue our reflection on consecration, starting from the profession of the three evangelical councils, also in relation to the other vocations in the church, and keeping in mind the consecration uh, in non-Christian religions. Consecration is macro-ecumenical. Um, and it goes beyond the Christian phenomenon. Third, we must develop a theology of consecrated life, starting from historical data, which interprets consecrated life itself. This is a topic that was hotly debated. Fifth, in this process, we also have to consider the Trinitarian dimension, the spousal dimension, the pneumatological dimension, the anthropological one, also in light of the challenges that come from current anthropology. Another open question or issue, uh, we need more dialogue between theology and canon law in order to promote uh, to a closer approach. It was also said that we must rethink the concept of consecration. And finally, we must continue to reflect on the relationship between man and woman. And by way of conclusion, I wish to say that we, during our seminar, we spoke about consecrated life as a, as a blessing for those who have been called to it and a blessing for humanity. This is not something that occurs automatically. It was said um, from uh, our uh, chairs as teachers, through our, our writings, um, through our um, daily work in the congregation, our conventions and meetings. We have to make sure that consecrated life is a real blessing for the consecrated persons and for all those who we whom we encounter on our way, we are spoken about consecrated life as a beautiful way of following Jesus. Let us try and manifest, express this beauty. It will be a form, perhaps, a first of evangelization. 
divine pulcri tudini samore. It is time to walk. Um, some centuries, I would say. Um, and this book that was published today has precisely this title, It is Time to Walk. And it's after the words of St. Teresa. We have, of course, to follow those who know more than we do. So it is time to walk. Let us get down to work a la obra. We read in a jail. Um, this, dear brothers and sisters and friends, is what, in great summary, was expanded on during the seminar um, that saw great uh, participation, international um, participants. There were only 100 participants because we decided that we could not exceed this number as the methodology was that of a seminar. But we hope that today's conference, um, in, in which we are going to talk and to hear about goals uh, which are going to be illustrated by Sister Kamen, so we, we hope that this commitment can further clarify all those aspects that uh, we focus our attention on and that led to the present conference. So these topics that unite us and that uh, allow us to start this reflection. Um, so it's not a matter of superiority, but rather of underscoring the richness of consecrated life. Bene, ringraziamo la thank you. Um, let us thank the Archbishop Secretary for his uh, speech, for summing up what emerged from the seminar. And from what he said, it represented the theme of consecration under different aspects and in different perspectives. No doubt we started from the ambiguity, the ambiguity of this term taken per se. But this term, this word was then um, added adjectives that allowed us to make distinctions and which will be very helpful, particularly tomorrow, to make um, distinctions in its use so that this word does not seem to be as ambiguous as it was presented by some literature in the past decades. Let us now give the floor to Sister Carmen Ros Nortes who was born in Spain in 1955. She is a professed in the Institute of the Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation since 1986. She studied in Spain. She studied theology, uh, catechetic pedagogy, and human sciences. In Rome, she obtained a, a degree in theology with a specialization in Mariology at the Marianum of Rome. Within her con religious congregations, she, were, she, played, she was in different positions. She was also a missionary in South Korea. And she's an official in our dicastery since 1st January 1992. And she has carried out different tasks over the years in the office of the ordinary governance, which is a second office. Uh, and also deals with the life and apostolate of institutes and in the office for the promotion and formation of consecrated life, which is the first of the five offices in the dicastery. For years, so she has been also a teacher in the studium, which is attached to the dicastery. On 23rd February 2019, Pope Francis appointed Sister Carmen under secretary of our congregation. Uh, and in the history of our dicastery, Sister Carmen is the third woman to have been appointed um, in, to this office. And uh, she has the floor. Grazie. Thank you. I shall not um, read a presentation, but I would like to share with you the pathway that we are going to follow in the coming days. Um, I would like to show you um, a video, just 60 seconds, um, and this will require some concentration. The video is called 
you adapt to reality or do you adapt reality to you? Mediamo si parte. Non parte. No. La regia, por, per favore, fa partire il video. If the control room can kindly um, start the video, please. La realtà si presenta So, reality for this child is uh, an immense and fascinating world, world to discover. His uh, eyes are wide open and they are full of questions and admiration, wonder. Uh, so, intuition tells him that there are some correspondences and he aspires to harmony goodness, truth, and beauty. But as we see in the video, um, it's evident that one, that being on one's own is not enough because even if you manage to perceive something, you still cannot understand everything. So the child wants a circle to be square and the triangle to be a circle. But of course, reality is something different. So sometimes we also run this risk. We want to allow new kinds of ministry to which consecrated life is being called to deal with uh, to fit in inadequate schemes. We continue to look at our lives in structures which can no longer contain it, as in the video, it seems as though sometimes you wanted to introduce language, model values, duties, spirituality, and our ecclesial identity into something in which they cannot fit. If we look at this child who is studying the situation carefully to match uh, uh, the shapes uh, and the holes, uh, we learn to look carefully uh, at our schemes so as to reprocess everything that constitutes the patrimony and identity of consecrated life within the church and before history. With this conference, we continue to carry out the reflection that was started by the seminar that was um, uh, summed up by Monsignor Carballo. Um, and this in order to go beyond uh, and put aside all the inappropriate schemes and better understand who we today as consecrated person can be in today's church and society. So our conference aims at uh, continuing uh, this uh, reflection on consecration and consecrated life, listening to the word, considering theological reflection and um, the canonical dimension. Uh, we want to open up a dialogue allowing us to recognize uh, uh, each other as people who, even though incarnating different multiple identities, we still uh, respond to the common calling to holiness and participate in the same uh, radical baptismal consecration through which God, out of pure love and gratuity, formed us as people of God. Uh, we want to better understand the identity of consecrated life uh, through the common through its common characteristics and those which specifically mark the various forms. Uh, and before anything else, we need to ask ourselves if the expression consecratio per evangelica concilia, which was meant to include all forms of consecrated life, uh, can still do so. 
We want to see consecrated life as one of the vocations in the church and which is at the service of the church and as a consequence, something that is also radically united to to all other vocations. This conference wishes to consider the way in which new charismatic forms, and with this term I mean associations and movements that include consecrated members, are to uh, well, in which way they relate with religious life and other forms of consecrated life, um, um, of which they take on many character, characteristics. Um, so we started with the desire to allow the scriptures to enlighten uh, all our reflections Um, tapping on the primary beauty of um, uh, experiences according to um, Evangelica Vivendi Formia. In fact, Professor Nuria Caldo just said that consecrated life finds its source of inspiration in the entire Bible. And she uh, focused our attention on, on the figure of the prophets, on the teachings of the wise people in order to illustrate the prophetic and uh, dimensions of consecrated life uh, regarding the New Testament. It is the person of Jesus. Um, and the, the, the figure that takes up the whole space. So we will continue tomorrow with Professor Garcia Paredes, who suggests uh, looking at consecration within the context of the Uh, covenants on the, on, on the following categories, covenants, sacramental, pneumatological, and eschatological, and apocalyptical. So these are correlated categories that um, give us um, a, a view of consecrated life. So charismatic consecration uh, shows divine beauty in us, uh, a unifying beauty. So beauty unifies uh, variety because it does not suppress it. Last but not least, Father Sebastiano Paciolla, by with the expression "Us sequitur vitam," will invite us tomorrow as well to consider that canonic norms ought always to be at the service of the abundance of life. Um, in this sense, it would be useful to consider canon law. Uh, as an instrument that facilitates Christian life and consecrated life without complicating it. Um, on, on Saturday, we will allow life to enlighten us through the experiences of all of us uh, Uh, and we incarnate the different realities of consecrated life, associations, and movements. Um, we all wish to discover pathways and start processes, as Pope Francis likes to say, sharing our life and faith. If you look at the agenda on Saturday, we will devote ourselves to group Uh, work, teamwork, and these teams will be will be made up of various vocations, uh, religious institutes, societies of apostolic life, secular institutes, ordo virginum, new institutes and new forms, associations and movements. Um, particularly during the morning session, we will focus on the characteristics of each experience of consecration. In the afternoon, we will identify the elements which the various realities have in common and what is specific to each of them. And last but not least, we will look at life in light of the current, uh, of the canon, of the accent canon law. So in the morning, we will share um, the way in which we live out our vocation in a continually changing world. The expression of the various vocations is today different compared with what happened some years ago. Certain changes have been assimilated so quickly uh, and so naturally that today we find it hard to believe that things were not always like this. That is why it is important to say who we are and not in abstract th terms, theoretically, but through our lived-out experiences. 
We will be guided by some vital parameters in this work. The first is uh, our relationship with the world. Il rapporto col mondo, perché il nostro dialogo. So, the, our relationship with the world, so for our dialogue not to remain something intellectual or self-referential, it has to start from life, from culture, from the sign of the times, from the situations of hardship uh, and the new efforts being done, words like sign, prophecy, eschatology, incarnation. Our, may be translated in everyday actions, in choices, um, cus, habits and lifestyles, models and norms. That is why we ask ourselves, how are we immersed in the world, but also how are we present in the world? How does the world see us? We are constantly um, solicited asked by the magisterium to be a church going forth. That is why we need to ask ourselves which prophecy, what answers my form of sequela can give to the demands of history. These are questions which uh, we will answer not through uh, an intellectual or theological uh, answer, but we will answer with our own lives and experiences and those of our communities or institutes or forms of life, highlighting uh, the steps forward made uh, over time or underlying difficulties and uh, trying to identify possible pathways. Another parameter is represented by dynamics between consecration and mission. During the seminar, what emerged strongly was this need to clarify the relationship between consecration and mission. So to what extent and how the personal dimension of the sequela is joined to the communitarian one of service. Therefore, what, uh, um, what is the expression of the mission and the belonging to a vocational community while sharing uh, in depth what we are experiencing, we need to keep in mind that we are consecrated for a mission and not for our works. And we must not lose sight of the prophetic foundation of the common charism of consecrated life. Mm. In whose respect our specific tasks become meaningful. Um, that is why we need to verify how we live the relationship between mission and works, between evangelization and charism highlighting the dangers of an unhealthy dynamics between consecration and mission. Mission invites us not to be self-referential. So consecration is for the mission. Um, this is the theme of the letter Rejoice that was published during the year of consecrated life. Consecration lived out in the joy of believing in Jesus, which becomes a, a, a joy, the joy of bringing to others the consolation of God. Um, sharing will continue with a reflection on fraternal life, um, which is the third parameter. We know that this is an aspect that has changed uh, over time as well, and within religious institutes, um, within the new forms, within secular institutes and the other vocational realities, we often find different expressions of fraternal life. Um, in, uh, in our group, it is important for us to share 
what uh, type of fraternal life we actually experience, not to say to find out which one is the perfect one, but to discover the meaning we give it today. And in these different forms, we must find a common base. Our communities are made up of, several, of different brothers and sisters who are precisely different from one another and who have received the gift of communicating um, and making the kingdom present here and now. The pathways open up to us in this 21st century are quite eloquent. We are facing many challenges. We are facing so many brothers and sisters who have lost their ability to dream and to expect a just community. Uh, where equality and fraternity are lived out. Um, the church and society need consecrated persons who also work within their own communities to achieve a deeper humanization. Another topic um, for our sharing is represented by vows. Here too, just as a child in the video, we must try and find the best way to express our sequela. It is important to communicate how evangelical councils are lived out in one's charism and sharing how poverty, chastity, and obedience are translated into our lives. And to understand the value we give um, to vows, it is necessary, necessary to reflect in an anthropological perspective and consider consecrated life is a prophetic sign of true humanity so that vows become a sign of fidelity against the new idolatries not, and they do not run the risk of becoming mere moral and legal norms. Um, so all vocational realities will share their features with the others so the groups will represent an opportunity for exchanging our experiences uh, in relation to one's vocational reality. We can think about an overturn pyramid, so from the specificity of the diverse vocational realities to uh, a discipleship uh, which has an anthropological and an experiential dimension. So we can move from sharing our worries and joys uh, to talk, to consider the continuous appeals by Pope Francis to prophecy. So this will then show the specific features of our various realities. In the afternoon of Saturday, we will focus on, on another aspect. Um, we will try to eliminate any ambiguity concerning the term consecration, uh, shedding light on, on what sh we all share, baptismal consecration, and delving deeper into every type or form of life with reference to baptismal consecration without any desire to do away with the differences, of course. Um, this way, the identity and mission of each form of Sequela Christi will be strengthened. Here, too, we will be guided by some questions. What is specific to our form of consecrated life with respect to baptismal consecration? Sequela Christi in consecrated life does not entail something more, but it is a response to a specific vocation that contains the grace to transform normality according to the dynamics of the kingdom. If we look at the different forms of Sequela Christi by, through evangelical councils, what are the common elements and which are those that express the originality of the religious institutes, the secular institutes, etc.? This is going to be another question. In the current society, 
we see a certain amount of homogenization in growth processes. And sometimes looking at some ads, uh, you cannot understand if what is being shown is uh, a young man or a young woman because they have the same haircut, same trousers, same shirt. Even in consecrated life, sometimes we see that there is a sort of neutralization of differences. So some lifestyles, um, the um, features uh, typical of a form of consecrated life uh, seem to be absorbed by others and the other way around. So we run the risk of losing the richness of variety. That is why it is important to identify what are the elements which uh, all forms of consecrated life have in common. Um, in order. In order, but also to understand what expresses the originality of one form compared to another. We must not be afraid of disorder, chaos, if we remain in an attitude of awareness and discernment. Um, Pope Francis reminds us that the Holy Spirit seems to create disorder in the church because this has, this brings about the diversity of charisms and gifts. But under his action, all this is really a great richness because the Holy Spirit is a spirit of unity, which does not mean uniformity, but leading everything back into harmony. So it is important that once we have identified what we all have in common, we can then also identify what are the differences. And here, too, we may find helpful what Pope Francis said. I say diversity and not difference, because difference entails that someone has more and another one has less. And different uh, is related to more and less, whereas diversity does not entail the fact that one is more and one and the other is less. Diversity is not a limitation, but it is a richness. If we have time, and I hope we do, another question may help us out in our exchanges on Saturday afternoon. In light of all we have said, the experiences we shared, do we think that the current canon law, uh, as it is formulated, is a valid help to our lives and our relationships? Does it express the ver various uh, diverse identities, and is it at the service of prophecy? The present norms, do they facilitate or hinder possible pathways ahead? All this may be summed up by the question, what should, in what way should canon law change so as to follow life? As we heard from His Excellency Monsignor Cavallo, this seminar has opened up various pathways. Um, very rapidly, I can say that consecrated life cannot be defined solely with the, ex the profession of evangelical councils. Um, we also need to consider other essential elements, um, fraternal life mission, in, in, inner life, vocation, and prophecy. We cannot speak um, any more of special consecration or, or of a more radical consecration because um, all Christians are called to be radical and prophets. It is a specific consecration which needs to find its place within the multiple identities. The male female reciprocity is part of everyday life. Many consecrated people are unaware of themselves. They uh, lack an inner life. Uh, they have a poverty, a relational, a relational poverty. We need to connect more closely. Consecration with uh, discipleship. The great surprise of the gospel, in fact, can be expressed through the experience of discipleship. It is also important um, to give new meaning to the vows uh, in a perspective of relationships. The vows are a possibility of living out relationships. All of our life is meant to be a relationship with the other and with the others who share our life story. This 
perspective based on relationships is a way to give a new sense, new meaning, and to humanize the meaning of the vows. We need to promote a perspective which is more inclusive and holistic. We need to have spiritual processes that are formative and formation processes that are spiritual. A formation which does not transform the person is not formative, and the formation itinerary is to be considered as a mystagogy. Consecration takes place through processes of integration until one feels fully integrated. So are we ready to challenge and change our formation system? How can we safeguard the radical equality of dignity in all the vocations which make up the people of God and at the same time safeguard the richness of the diversity which is the essential element of consecrated life? Understanding the world and consecrated life is an ample effort by which we are questioned on how to better integrate multiculturalism in our concept of mission, how to live mission and fraternity, our inner life and formation. Faced with an ever-changing world, we are called to move from multiculturalism to an appreciation and the strengthening of intercultural relationships. The document New Wines in New Wineskins speaks about the synodality, synergies, the necessary freedom to start processes, the need of elastic form, of flexible forms, and mental openness to imagine ways of discipleship which are prophetic and charismatic, which new steps can be promoted so that the ideals and the doctrine can become part of life. Systems, structures, uh, services, styles, uh, relationships, and jargons in relation to consecrated life. Keynote speeches that uh, we will listen to our greater knowledge of the diverse experiences of consecrated life, uh, the sharing of our life on who we want to be will surely reveal new horizons that open up for the entire church and consecrated life. Laudato Si, Pope Francis, also mentions the traits that consecrated life should promote in order to promote and to encourage evangelical culture. Therefore, our desire is that although perhaps still without all the certainties we are seeking, we will surely come out of this conference with the happiness of having experienced the profound harmony of so many charisms and the beauty of supporting one another along the journey of life. Therefore, let us set on this journey and the best ways by praying, as we will do so in our prayer vigil. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Carmen, for your contribution. Uh, thank you for mentioning the steps that we need to take in the first part of your presentation. Some of the steps have already, uh, you mentioned, have already been made, have already been taken. However, there is a still room to reflect that you suggested some points uh, so that we can prepare ourselves to uh, listen to the two keynote speeches tomorrow for the dialogue on the Saturday, and this has helped us open up many horizons. So I would like to thank all of the speakers, but also as a reflection, the work that was conducted by the congregation also because we understood that there was a need for some clarity, for some clarifications at the theological, but also at the juridical level, because life experience always comes first, that comes before any law. Now we have 15 minutes to take a few questions. 
We'll follow the usual method. Uh, please uh, be brief with your questions. And then we will uh, ask uh, if uh, there should be the need for any clarification. I would like to also mention another couple of things. Uh, at the end of the session, we will all go to the Basilica of St. John de Lateran because, as you know, at 7, we will begin our vigil. But as we are a large group, first of all, we will need to pass the uh, checks. Please, you need to have your badge with you because otherwise uh, you will not be allowed into the church, into the basilica. The same goes for tomorrow morning at 8.30. We, you can start ent go, um, entering the um, uh, hall Paolo VI. Uh, so please uh, let us try and go there by group and please you should have uh, uh, on you the badge because that will clearly allow you to enter. Tomorrow morning we will meet in Piazza Sant'Uffizio and at 3.15 we will begin this afternoon session in this conference hall. Do you have any questions? You may have the impression that we are, uh, we, we want to challenge you a little, but we simply want you to be ready to embrace what life offers you. We have often told you that uh, we are changing our epoch, this period of history. So all of our realities emerge as having this need to adjust to the changing times. Probably the most beautiful thing that comes up is that we are probably readier to listen to God because he is the reason why we embrace this lifestyle. So to be ready to listen, not to have too many answers to give, but you know the importance of having many questions to ask is important because this will also allow us to uh, listen to God more closely. Uh, yesterday I was asked, uh, where are we going to have lunch tomorrow? Now, after the audience um, at 1.30, uh, lunch will be served here and then after the digestion at 3.15, we will begin the afternoon session in this uh, conference room. Tomorrow, we will have a full day. We'll have uh, two speeches and uh, uh, two long periods for debate. So I think that the prefect may conclude because I don't see any hands sign up in the air. So uh, well, let's, let, let us leave the questions for another time so that we can go to the Basilica slowly on time and beyond time. Uh, also, uh, there might be some traffic, so please uh, make sure you pay attention to cars. The headsets need to be left on the desk. Please remove the jack from the machine. Please separate the headset from the mach translation the machine. Leave them on your desk, but please separate the jack from the machine. Thank you.